डज इंडिया करंटली नीड अ यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड श्री शंभो रामनाथ सी यू सी सी शुड हैव कम इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी वन और बिटवीन कम्युनिटी वॉज सब्जेक्टेड टू यूनिफॉर्मिटी मेनी पीपल माइट नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन दी डेकेट बिफोर द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया वॉज ब्रॉट इन टू फोर्स फाइव थाउजेंड सिक्स थाउजेंड ईयर्स ऑफ सिविलाइजेशनल कंटिन्यूम ऑफ इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट Every community had their own personal loss, and they were allowed that. The great uh, Nehru and the constitutional frame framers decided that all Hindus will be subjected to one uniform law. For example, in Kerala there was matriarchy. North East had matriarchy. Uh, places like Haryana, which didn't exist then, which is part of Punjab, had a lot of patriarchal uh, might, if you want to call it that, with kampachayats working even now. but all these were abolished and more than 85% of indian population the hindus were subjected to one uniform law and of course the makers of constitution also put in the directive principles that the country and successive governments will strive to implement universal or I mean, uniform civil code and bring about a change of heart in the minority community of muslims of course they have not written the word so why did they put it in the directive principles for the sole benefit of muslims to come around see hindus uh, nehru thought were a flock of sheep let them let me put them into one pen and they will agree and we did agree But the muslims said no 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 sharia law when it came to civil rights they wanted sharia law when it came to penal code they didn't want the harsh sharia laws where you know you're subjected to cutting off your hand or Uh, breaking your eyes or stoning you to death the penal code of sharia muslims don't want the civil code they want where you could actually easily say talaq 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 and get rid of a woman marry four women my own grandfather great grandfather had two wives i'm sure that each one of our viewers including your ancestors had two three four five wives hindus could also marry but they were subjected to and we all accepted that one wife policy is best for everyone hindus also accepted that some of the customs like uh, burning the widow as sati is wrong we accepted it that taking dowry no self worthy man will take dowry we accepted that it is not a good thing dowry laws are brought in even though they are misused later so every law that hindus were thrown at for forced to accept hindus have taken but this one special community the islamic community of india in fact triple talaq or meher or not giving alimony doesn't exist even in pakistan islamic countries don't have these laws which are implemented in india in the name of minority appeasement it is time i think it is way beyond time they have had 70 years to set their house in order bring it up to speed bring it into 21st century and be as every other community in the world is they have decided to be stuck 1500 years back now if they don't do it i think it is a responsibility of the modi government to bring them into 21st century what he is doing is absolutely right and also the fact that ever since bjp was formed in 1984 every manifesto has implementation of uniform civil code written in it and bjp was voted to power based on their manifesto in fact this debate is only because i mean shri modi ji has a large heart and he doesn't want what happened to the hindu community in the 50s where they were forced he doesn't want this to happen to the muslim community so we are discussing this video as a part of the large heartedness of a hindu leader you must understand that what about the argument that ucc will destroy india's pluralism and diversity only if that was possible see the western world has never really understood how the indian subcontinent functions as a country as a nation because we have such diverse languages we have food every 20 kilometers the accent changes every 40 kilometer the cuisine changes yet we have been a very strong civilizational state 
because exactly because we are not a nation state it is a civilization which updates itself upgrades itself we are probably in version 1056 i'm just giving you an odd number so we keep reinventing let me give you an example see if you look at uh, the types of marriages in the hindu dharma more than nine different types of marriages are prescribed so when the framers of the constitution the laws that were brought in to make one type of marriage the ritualistic aspects they couldn't actually fix on what is that one thing which ensures that a hindu is wedded to another hindu then finally they said okay fire worship you know going around the fire seven times but even that was not enough because there is gandharva vivaha where there is no fire then they said mala exchanging of garland now that is a form of marriage so it went on and on these debates have happened there is a particular community in uh, andhra pradesh where any woman can go and spend a night with any man and the man has to give 1 rupee in the morning to the husband that one night stand is accepted as a legal dharmic wedding all this was discussed and they said no we can't accept it so this plurality of india was already discussed and the uniformity amongst more than 85% of the population at that time the hindus was already implemented is already implemented a smaller minority commit you know community has constantly been appeased by the congress party so that they can get their vote en masse what happened in shah banu case an 80 year old woman in spite of the supreme court ruling was refused alimony some 15 20 rupees per month because if that old woman gets alimony then all the women in uh, islam uh, need to be given that so what happened is the hindus have maintained their plurality in spite of the uniform codes aren't we exclusively if you go to bengal people are getting married they have properties uh, all all the rights of the women are maintained same in kerala which is matriarchal where the boy after marriage goes and stays with his in-law the daughter inherits the mother's property yet we are all living seamlessly we are not fighting we are not saying there is anything anti dharmic anti religion and like i said in many islamic countries many of these sharia laws don't exist so the plurality doesn't get disturbed because you bring uniformity this is not you know something uh, very brittle which will break away with implementing a small law which says that all of us all brothers like modi ji says भारत माता के सब भाई हैं सब बच्चे हैं वी आर ऑल चिल्ड्रन ऑफ भारत माता एंड ईच ब्रदर ईच सिस्टर मस्ट हैव द सेम लॉस इक्वालिटी मस्ट कम बिफोर यूनिफॉर्मिटी व्हाट इज योर आंसर टू द आर्ग्यूमेंट दैट हाउ डू यू ब्रिंग यूनिफॉर्मिटी विदाउट इक्वालिटी दिस इज द लेफ्ट विंग्स यूटोपिया दे हैव बीन ड्रीमिंग ऑफ अ वर्ल्ड वेयर एवरीथिंग इज इक्वल that is an impossibility it only exists in their minds there has never been a society which had equality there will never be a society which has equality uniformity yes what is the difference between equality and uniformity equality means that all everybody is the same now you have an, another brother i have a sister we are not equal even in one family it is impossible to find equality our hand does is not equal we five fingers are different and only when they come together do they make a fist that is strange imagine if we had the same size some people will be smart some people will be dull some people will be tall some people will be good at painting somebody is great in math there can be no equality the parabrahma did not design the world this way if if it was that then according to islam itself everybody would already have been umma there would be no no other uh, you know kind of community existing it is the left which thinks that we can make an army out of civilians that is not going to happen yes 
the other important aspect when it comes to uniformity we must understand this is not just based on religion it is also about bringing uniformity and giving human rights to men and women now before we go into equality first these left so called left intellectuals must bring about uniformity or uniform laws for men and women that they don't talk you know muslim woman wears a burqa which i would say is regressive for them it is self expression if a woman wears a pallu then it is regressive in the past when a woman muslim women get mutilated they have katna done in the name of religion that is acceptable does anybody ask a 4 year old 5 year old girl why she is being mutilated in a private parts nobody talks about it but if you go to a shakti temple and somebody is pierced willfully pierced the trishula uh, in, in the, uh, on their tongue or through their cheek no 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 this is self mutilation this is superstition in the name of religion why only for hindus when it comes to hindu festivals no crackers uh, you have to ban all sorts of uh, bali all animal sacrifices should, should be banned but we'll celebrate bakrid this is the left because the left looks at the whole world you know from an angle of haves and have nots oppressed and oppressor who is the oppressor in india obviously it must be the more intellectual people the brahmins the manuvadis who is the oppressed everybody else and if you ask a muslim you will say humne 800 saal se tum pe raj kiya hai if you if you ask a woman if you ask a muslim he will say ah, we are the rulers of india for 800 years who is the oppressed really please take off the lenses my dear left intellectuals take off the lenses uniformity is possible equality is impossible stop living in your utopia second thing when it comes to women actually we before we get into uniform civil codes i think the rights of the women must be upheld a hindu girl has more property rights than a muslim girl muslims pay something called meher the word meherbani which means favor the word meher means favor they give money to a woman before her marriage as meher which is equivalent to buying her and if if she is khuda na khasta abandoned by triple talaq which is not no more possible thanks to modi ji talaq 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 and she is left to her own devices no alimony no maintenance she can't adopt do you know if the husband is impotent a muslim woman cannot adopt a hindu woman can it's not just muslim hindu also christians for example christians are forbidden to abort their child and if you know of the instance of savita who is from karnataka she went to belgium and she died because there was a complication she was pregnant and the child couldn't come out she just died because it has strict anti abortion laws adhering to christianity nobody asked the belgium government nobody asked europeans nobody asks them in the name of religion she is not even a christian she is a hindu girl she died an indian girl died because of christians laws which were implemented there we are not even talking about hindu law or christian law or muslim law we are talking of a uniform civil code which is an indian law based on constitution you have problems with that are we stupid who are they trying to hoodwink it's taken 70 years i have been see before this when they were uh, earlier debates about the uniform civil code i have been telling them always here in karnataka please set your house in order why do you need modi ji's government or some external force to tell you to become up to date they can do it themselves they can have fiqh which is allowed and they can issue fatwas they can amend their own sharia laws since they have not done it for 70 years now somebody has to do it now they better accept it what are the benefits of uniform civil code to india see modi ji has already very clearly said all the brothers of bharat mata children of bharat mata will have uniform law that itself is a very big thing second thing the judicial processes that are getting so complicated in india you know whether it is inheritance or property there is a hindu court a muslim court a qazi and somebody else that will go everybody will come to one law one court one system of justice number 3 and most importantly the women of this country deserve to have equal laws the same as their hindu sisters 
our Muslim sisters require the same law as their Muslim sisters. Whether it is inheritance, whether it is choosing their own husband, they don't even have that. All the Hindu laws, which actually when Jawaharlal Nehru implemented these laws, he said, these laws are being brought because we are bringing you up to the human rights declaration, the rights that was declared by United Nations. So, uh, child marriage was gone, widow remarriage was introduced, Sati Prata, which was burning at the pyre of the husband's uh, funeral was taken off, dowry system was abolished. All these laws were brought into the Hindu fold. Why not the Muslim fold? Because the logic that was given by Jawaharlal Nehru was that these laws are below human rights. Uniform civil code is basically giving justice to our Muslim sisters to bring them up to speed, to bring them up to the level of human rights which every human on this earth requires. The child marriage is not happening in Muslims. How is it possible that four women, you tell me, how four women coexisting with one man can be happy? Is it possible? Is it some sort of brainwashing that happens in Islam? How can some woman willfully put burqa and be happy with it? So there are many questions, mutilations. So all the women of this country should have equal status in the eyes of law. That is the biggest gain through UCC. It must be done. Shambho Ramanath.